In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. My brothers and sisters, as we come to the altar of God here at church, to the altar of our hearts at home, we acknowledge our sins and prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You are sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who teach us that you abide in hearts that are just and true, grant that we may be so fashioned by your grace as to become a dwelling pleasing to you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Leviticus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron, If someone has on his skin a scab or pustule or blotch, which appears to be the sore of leprosy, he shall be brought to Aaron the priest, or to one of the priests among his descendants. If the man is leprous and unclean, the priest shall declare him unclean by reason of the sore on his head. The one who bears the sore of leprosy shall keep his garments rent and his head bare, and shall muffle his beard. He shall cry out, unclean, unclean. As long as the sore is on him, he shall declare himself unclean, since he is in fact unclean. He shall dwell apart, making his abode outside the camp. The word of the Lord. I turn to you, Lord, in time of trouble, and you fill me with the joy of salvation. Blessed is he whose fault is taken away, whose sin is covered. Blessed the man to whom the Lord imputes not guilt, in whose spirit there is no guile. I turn to you, Lord, in time of trouble, and you fill me with the joy of salvation. Then I acknowledged my sin to you, my guilt I covered not. I said I confess my faults to the Lord, and you took away the guilt of my sin. I turn to you, Lord, in time of trouble, and you fill me with the joy of salvation. Be glad in the Lord and rejoice, you just. Exalt all you upright of heart. I turn to you, Lord, in time of trouble, 
and you fill me with the joy of salvation. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do everything for the glory of God. Avoid giving offense, whether to the Jews or Greeks or the Church of God, just as I try to please everyone in every way, not seeking my own benefit, but that of the many, that they may be saved. Be imitators of me, as I am of Christ. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. A great prophet has arisen in our midst. God has visited his people. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. A leper came to Jesus and, kneeling down, begged him and said, If you wish, you can make me clean. Moved with pity, he stretched out his hand, touched him, and said to him, I do will it, be made clean. The leprosy left him immediately, and he was made clean. Then, warning him sternly, he dismissed him at once. He said to him, See that you tell no one anything, but go, show yourself to the priest, and offer for your cleansing what Moses prescribed. That will be proof for them. The man went away and began to publicize the whole matter. He spread the report abroad so that it was impossible for Jesus to enter a town openly. He remained outside in deserted places, and people kept coming to him from everywhere. The Gospel of the Lord. This coming Wednesday, we'll be jumping into another season of Lent. Uh, in the bulletin this weekend is a, is a listing of all the, all the Mass times for Ash Wednesday. There's also an insert that lays out uh, everything being offered by uh, through the parish this Lent, uh, things like Bible studies and Taizé prayer and uh, Stations of the Cross and so on. Uh, you'll find in there uh, an adult faith formation uh, series on the beauty of the Catholic faith as well. Uh, some ideas for almsgiving are given in the insert as well as a reminder about fasting. And then last, but of course not least, uh, there's a listing of confession times uh, that'll be held throughout Lent. And of course, confession and reconciliation uh, play such an important role in Lent. And it's something which is highlighted by the scriptures today. Last Sunday, we noted how the confessional is one of the many reasons God gives us to live a hopeful life as opposed to a life of despair. What a treasure it is to have that little room in the back of church where we can bring our sins to God and God says, I forgive you. What a treasure that is. We can point to the confessional and we can say there, that's a reason. Jesus gives me to be hopeful and encouraged. God is for me, not against me. Uh, Jesus has said it here in the gospel. I do will it, be made clean. God wills and desires us to be whole and to not be broken. The confessional is a sign that God is for us. But of course, that confessional also has a door on it, and we have to go through that door. And that can be a difficult, sometimes excruciating thing to do, not necessarily because of God, but because of our own shame and our own embarrassment. Uh, We ourselves can be the biggest hurdle when it comes to confession. And I realize that, you know, we're talking here about the sacrament of confession, but we should also think more broadly. Uh, after all, we can bring our everyday confessions to God anywhere, anytime. And we can, we can, and we should. Uh, it's, it's part of living life with God, our regular honesty and openness with God, wherever we happen to be. So when we talk about going through the door, it could be the door of the confessional, but it's also, and more often, the metaphorical door of our heart and soul. The season of Lent involves opening the door of our heart and soul to God. And that can be uh, sometimes difficult, uh, sometimes excruciating. Again, not because of God necessarily, but because of our own shame and embarrassment. I know that for myself, 
sometimes when I say or do or think something which is so unchristlike, it's like my soul gets all twisted. I can sort of feel it. Uh, and I think to myself, did I really just do that again? It's like my soul kind of gets repelled by it. It's like two magnets that just push away from each other. And it twists in order to, to turn away from that. It's an uncomfortable feeling. It's kind of an unclean feeling. But of course, that's the feeling of shame or, or embarrassment. And so opening the door of our heart to God or going through the confessional door uh, can be difficult because it makes us uh, come face to face with our, uh, those feelings of shame or embarrassment or discomfort we have because of our sins. But this experience of our discomfort um, can help us to relate to these lepers in the scriptures today. Not only did they have their physical ailments uh, to deal with, they had to declare themselves unclean to other people. If anybody came near them, they themselves had to confess their condition publicly, uh, out loud, which must have been a torturous thing to have to do, you know, filled with shame and heartache mixed with the longing to be whole again and healed. Just imagine to having, having to confess our sins out loud. But of course, that's exactly what we do in the confessional. And it's what we do whenever we open our heart and our soul to God in prayer. We reveal our condition. We admit our shame and embarrassment. We make ourselves vulnerable and open to judgment. But then again, who are we revealing ourselves to? Well, to God, to the one who is entirely for us, to the one who positively wills and desires that we be whole again and clean and free. In the gospel here, when that leper approached Jesus, as we see, Jesus didn't run away. Uh, he didn't make a face in disgust or, or cast judgment. He did just the opposite. For starters, Jesus was already there among the lepers. He was actively there with them. And when that leper came to Jesus, Jesus touched him and brought him closer. You know, when Jesus says, come to me, all you who labor and are burdened, and I will give you rest, he means it. We go to Jesus. With all of our shame and embarrassment, we reveal our sins and we reveal our hope in him. And we ask him, Jesus, will you clean me? Would you make me better? And he will always say, yes, I do will it. Be made clean. My beloved son, my beloved daughter, yes. And it's this radical love and mercy of God uh, that makes us sing our alleluia. Alleluia, my sins don't control me. My sins don't define me. I am a beloved child of God. And nothing I'll do will ever make him turn his back on me. Alleluia. But the joy of all this is sort of tempered by the fact that we have to open that door first. You know, doctors can't help us if we don't first tell them where the aches and the pains are. The dentist can't fix anything until we open up and let them take a look. And it's the same with, with the God. Our Easter alleluia is guaranteed to us through Jesus, but we first have to open up and tell him where the aches and the pains are. We have to be like those lepers who had to declare themselves unclean and in need of healing. And that's really the main task of Lent, opening our heart and our soul to God and asking him, Jesus, will you help me? Will you heal me? Really, it's a joyful task that lays, us, that lays before us uh, in Lent, but it's also a sometimes difficult task. And it's for that reason that, that after today, the church uh, around the world pauses its singing of the Alleluia. At the end of Mass, this Alleluia sign here in front of the Ambo will be carried out of here. And it won't return until the Easter Vigil, when we'll celebrate that radical kindness and love God has shown us. In spite of our sins and even because of our sins, God comes among us to raise us up. And so again this weekend, we see that Jesus gives us wonderful reasons to be hopeful. He gives us wonderful reasons to sing Alleluia. And one of those is the season, which starts in a couple of days. We ask God to help us to be humble and courageous during the season of Lent, opening our hearts to him, to him who touches and brings us through Lent and into Easter healing. Enjoy. And we profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. 
and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. And we entrust our prayers to the Lord. For the Church in these years of Eucharistic revival, that our belief in Christ's living presence would move us with awe and inspire us to give ourselves in love for God and others, let us pray to the Lord. For people of all nations who experience violence in their daily lives, that their hearts would be guided away from despair and toward hope and faith, let us pray to the Lord. For those in need of God's healing grace, including Tommy, Rona, Jeremy, Bill, Jeff, Joe, those on our prayer chain, and those we hold in thought and prayer, let us pray to the Lord. For those who are isolated from family, friends, and church, that the Holy Spirit would inspire us to reach out to them and offer a welcoming hand, let us pray to the Lord. For those who are discerning a vocation to married life, consecrated religious life, the diaconate or the priesthood, that God would inspire them to trust in his plans for them, let us pray to the Lord. For those who seek help through the ministries supported by the Bishop's Appeal, that their lives would be set on a path of hope and healing, let us pray to the Lord. For our children who are celebrating their first reconciliation, that through the grace of the sacrament, they will encounter more deeply the love and kindness of God, let us pray to the Lord. For the prayers written in our parish books of prayer, and for the prayers we offer to the Lord from the altar of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. For the family and friends of St. Clair Parish for whom this Mass is offered, and for all those who have fallen asleep in Christ, may they rest in his perfect love and peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Let our God, we come before you today with hearts open to your grace and your mercy. We ask you to receive the prayers we offer you and to answer them through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. For through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May this oblation, O Lord, we pray, cleanse and renew us, and may it become for those who do your will the source of eternal reward. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For we know it belongs to your boundless glory that you came to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity 
and even fashion for us a remedy out of mortality itself, that the cause of our downfall might become the means of our salvation through Christ our Lord. Through him, the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and David our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. And at the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. 
Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Having fed upon these heavenly delights, we pray, O Lord, that we may always long for that food by which we truly live, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Go in peace.